So while alfalfa hay is a good source of protein and calcium, it must be used sparingly to feed Triceratops. On a side note with this in mind, another type of hay could probably be considered as well. There is one type of hay that might be a good candidate for Triceratops, even if it might be a bit bizarre. That being hemp hay. While it might seem a bit bizarre, there is a logical reason behind this. The reason for this is that while hemp itself wasn't found in the Hill Creek Formation, it had relatives within the same family found within the formation, and it's quite possible that it was feasted upon by many herbivorous dinosaurs, Triceratops being amongst them. One must be careful about using hemp due to its legal issues in different states and countries, along with being concerned that the hemp hay has lower concentrations of total THC, along with no cross-contamination with marijuana. Feed using humulus, a relative of hemp, could be possibly be considered too. Along with hay, pelleted feed would be a good addition to make up for what hay is lacking. As mentioned earlier, cereal grains and grass related feed would most likely be useless for Triceratops. The best type of pelleted feed to go for is one that is low in starch and high in fiber. Thankfully, there are plenty of pelleted feed in the zoo world that offers such food. One in particular is designed for a browsing species, especially those that can't go for grass or starchy food. Missouri Browser, or often called Moose Chow, is specifically designed to give browsing species all they need while complementing natural browsing behavior. This is because it is low in starches and high in fiber thanks to the pellets having over 22% sawdust of aspen trees into the mixture. One thing that might be able to be added to the pelleted feed if one were to make a new mixture is crushed oyster shells for extra calcium for bone growth for growing offspring and egg development for breeding females. Any other additions or altercations would need to be done after some more research or use avian nutrition Another important component on feeding a large browser like Triceratops is to provide them with browse. By definition, browse is basically the leaves, twigs, and branches from, harvested from non-toxic trees and shrubs for enrichment, for enrichment and for nutritional needs, such as these uh, pepper tree branches that I have just chopped off. The reason why it's so important is for three reasons. One. It provides all the necessary vitamins and minerals that the hay and pelleted feed lacks or can't be able to provide. The second reason is that, like I mentioned earlier, for enrichment, this can encourage natural behavior, especially when you hang the, hang the brows at an elevated point. And the third reason is for dental. For example, for gir some giraffes have a molars that continuously grow throughout their whole lives. Several other perverse mammals are like this. And this is an adaptation to deal with very fibrous material, whether it's grass or, or browse. Triceratops, while they don't have molars the same as mammals, they do, however, have dental batteries with many individual teeth packed tightly together and they continuously replace each other, almost like a growing molar. And this is, to, is a response to deal with very fibrous material. And if you don't provide this, this could cause lead to dental problems. While non-toxic shrubs and trees are generally preferable, it should be considered to obtain brass material from living representatives of those whose fossils were found alongside Triceratops. These include, but are not limited to, palm trees, cedar trees, conifers, ginkgos, magnolias, and so forth. Perhaps amongst these different species of plants, one that will be the most useful, the most plentiful, and the most important for the well-being of captive Triceratops are palm fronds from palm trees such as date palms. Since, they, since the palms were around at the same time as Triceratops, it's conceivable that they would favor them. Also, they're known to be like very fibrous which is very important for the 
dental welfare of the Triceratops. Also plentiful because in places like Southern California and Arizona, there is a large surplus of palm fronds that are a major waste problem from tree trimmers. In fact, there are even some companies that are trying to convert these palm fronds along with their dates into livestock feed, such as a pelleted feed, hay, and even silage. So it could be possible that when they get when this becomes commonplace in those companies, they would be very useful to contact to, to, to expand the, the, the menu of captive triceratops. For herbivores that consume a lot of leaves, twigs, bark, and other fibrous food, sodium or salt would need to be added to their feed. Another way you can supplement the animal with salt is to give them salt water. They could just drink it for when they need it. But you will need to be careful about the amount you give Triceratops, because too much salt could be toxic and kill the animal. More research on this would be needed. Whether it is a Triceratops or a dog, knowing what to feed an animal that you are taking care of is of most importance. Along with evidence found in the fossil record today, I also used tortoises, elephants, moose, browsing rhinos, some species of birds, and several other species as models to help develop the information I have displayed here. If there is something you want to provide or mention, bring them up in the comment section down below respectfully. Such conversations are welcomed here, as this is an association of paleo zookeepers. I hope you have a grand day. Before I end this video, I want to say thank you to Keenan Taylor for the lovely commissions that he has made for me. If you wish to see more of his artwork, I would suggest going to his channel, which I will leave a link to down below. I also want to say thank you to all my subscribers out there. Your subscriptions are much appreciated. 